Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Locker Room on this Friday, October 20th. I'm Alan Locker. Actress Jane Badler from the cult classic V is joining me from Australia today to tell us about lending her vocals to the new single Tears of Faith from the Australian electronic pop band Parallax, fronted by John Von Allen. The song is a down-tempo electronic dance arrangement about broken relationships and the hope for reconciliation. Its accompanying visual is directed by Leanne Hanley, and the video is amazing. Von Allen plays the role of a mad professor intent on creating his perfect soulmate. Through the power of computers, AI, and a little bit of magic, he manages to transmute a blank slate into the perfect female creation played by Jane. The Tears of Faith video is about love, loneliness, and hubris, and touches on the superficial and the spiritual. Jane appeared regularly on American television from 1976 through 1989. Along with V, she starred on One Life to Live as Melinda Kramer and Fantasy Island. She also played the seductive snatcher of Alec Baldwin's baby on NBC's The Doctor, where she played Natalie Bell, and caused a stir opposite Kim Novak in Falcons, in Falcon's Crest. In 2010, Jane returned to V in the reimagining of this series. It is such a pleasure to welcome Jane Badler to the locker room. Hi, Jane. Hi. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for being here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, October 20th, you have a movie premiering tonight in Australia. What can you tell us about it? Yes, well, I, I shot a film a couple of years ago called The Trim Season. It's a horror fantasy. I produced it. I'm one of the stars. And it's an amazing film. And thank God it's coming here to Melbourne uh, in a festival. And it's going to be going to all the different cities in Melbourne. And I'm really excited that it's coming to my hometown. It'll be oh, at the that's Nova. awesome. For you Aussies, it'll be at the Nova on the 20th of October. There you go. I, I love that. I love that. Well, Tears of Faith is the first single release from Parallax's Genesis album. Tell us how you got paired up with Parallax and singing on, on the track. I'm trying to remember how we were. You know, he's he's quite a presence here in Australia. He has a, a nighttime show called um, Nights of Neon on Joy FM. So I knew of him. I knew that he had a, you know, a big popularity, a big following. I loved his music. And I think we somehow connected. I wanted him to produce some of my songs and we connected. And then he asked me to sing on some of his songs. And um, yeah, it was really interesting for me because I'm not really a kind of disco pop singer. So I learned a lot working with him because he's an expert at that. I love that. That's amazing. And the, the video, like I said, the song's great. And the video is so visual. Tell us about filming that at uh, Blue Tree Studios in Victoria. Yeah, well, my my friend Leanne Hanley is one of my good friends. And she's directed me in a lot of things. And she's, um, you know, she's just got a wonderful vision. She's kind of quirky. And I think when John and her got together, I knew it was going to be something very special. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I look a bit like Barbie, don't I? Yeah, like, yeah you do. <laughs> perfect, you know, because it was pre the Barbie movie. It was but pre Barbie, I, yeah. I played an elder Barbie, you know, like one of those kind of sexy older Barbies. Anyway, yeah. but um, yeah, it was, um, it was so much fun to shoot. I love playing characters like that. And, um, and I think the video turned out so well. I'm so excited by it. I hope everybody checks oh, it out. It, yeah. Eye popping, eye popping. The colors are just spectacular. Yeah. John's very good at that. He's not only a musician, an amazing singer, an amazing composer, but he's very good technically with computer. He he probably did a lot of that, you know, a lot of the AI in that. Oh, I love that. Do I have it right that you'll be featured also on their next single, Goodbye Berlin? Um, I don't think so, unless he decided to put me in last minute. Maybe oh, okay. I, I was told you might be featured as a, some oh. background vocals. So. Oh, yes. Yes, I think I am. I have some background vocals, but I'm not sure that I'm up front. Do you know okay, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And Goodbye Berlin, I think it is, the next song coming out. Yes. Um, I love, I mean, you're living in Melbourne, but you were born in Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn girl. I will always be a New York chick. 
bloody well, I bloody, I mean, I shouldn't curse, but I love New York. I love New York City through its ups, through its downs, through it all. I just love New York. What was your childhood like in Brooklyn? Well, I was only one and we moved. I was a baby. We lived in, I was born in Flatbush, but then we moved to Long Island and um, my dad, you know, we were kind of upwardly mobile. So we moved a lot. You know, I think every three years we moved. I got very good at uh, figuring out how to navigate a new town, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, it was good. It was a good upbringing. I mean, it's different from Australia, obviously. Very different, you know? Absolutely. Uh, I, can I haven't been to Australia. I have a very dear friend from Melbourne. He yeah. now lives in London, but his family is still uh, in Melbourne. Um, I turned 57 in uh <laughs> I just turned 57. Sorry. And I, for 60, I'm going to, that's our, my husband and I have decided that that's our big trip. So. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you'll have to, I'll give you some ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you, you studied drama at Northwestern, right? Yes. Where did your love of theater begin? Do you know, I think as a kid, there were four children. Uh, my parents were very young. My mom started having kids at 18 and they were very busy. Uh, and I think for me, it was such a wonderful way to express myself, um, to feel like I had a place in the world. And also I used to fantasize a lot. I was a bit of a child with an imagination. So theater sort of fed that for me and gave me like an, an identity that made me feel good growing up. Love that. Yeah. Love that. And then you won the title of Miss New Hampshire and competed at the 1973 Miss America pageant. Were those good experiences? It was such a strange experience for me because it's very Americana. You know, I don't know if it's still like that, but it was very PG in those days, you know? Oh, yeah, back then, yeah. yeah. Bathing suits. It's not like now. You know, they were had little panels, and, and I kind of felt a bit like I was a bit of a rebel in those days. Um, you know, I had... I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't like I didn't listen, but I had this kind of attitude about authority, and um, and I was an art. I thought of myself as an artist, so I had to sort of tone all that down in order to compete. And I remember the woman who won was a, a born again Christian, and of course that's who won. Not that I have anything against born again Christians. <laughs> uh, every night we would stand in a circle. I don't know. She led us in prayer. I mean, I'm a nice Jewish girl from New York. So I had to kind of like, you know, I had to kind of take a part of my personality and submerge it. So it was kind of hard in that way. But, you know, what an experience. What an incredible experience for me. I bet. What, what is Australia like for you? Australia is like a haven. You know, it's, it's not as crazy as America. You know, I love American energy, but... There's so much madness in America, you know, with politics and with just a lot of things. And it's religion. Seems I'm Jewish. I mean, anti Semitism in the United States is crazily on the rise. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, sadly, a, a deep division in America. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't feel that here. And I mean, there is a division right now going on with, with something that we're voting on, but, but it seems much more mellow here. Um, people aren't as frantic, people aren't quite as driven. Um, and so there's a lovely kind of people like their downtime. People like to have fun. Sport is very big here. Um, it's probably not as inspiring, but it's just a lovely mm. lifestyle. I bet. I bet. I've heard great, great things. Um, yeah. the pageants, is that where you first started singing? So I started singing um, probably like when I was very young. I sang all through school. I had played the guitar and I used to be in those school assemblies playing guitar and singing. I would sit in my room and learn, you know, James Taylor, Carol King, you know, Blackbird singing in the dead of night, you know, all that stuff. The yeah. Beatles, you know, and um, yeah, it was just always part of my life. And then when I won when I won Miss New Hampshire, I was given the opportunity to sing in clubs all around New England. And that sort of started my performing, you know, in a professional way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I kind of played at the Playboy Club in New York and, um, and, and then moved more into acting and didn't come back to singing until much later. 
Inc incredible. Um, who were some of your early role models or mentors? Uh, you mean in the in the singing world? No, in 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 acting or singing. Well, I had a teacher, and uh, my sixth grade teacher. She saw she was a bit of a funny thing, but she did see something in me. I was very very shy, and I was so shy that they called me Dumb Jane because I couldn't talk to boys at all. Like I literally could not say anything. I was so shy, and she saw something in me, and. I used to stay after school and perform like songs. I don't know. It sounds a bit weird now. But <laughs> I, you know, I remember singing like all the Streisand songs, like from Funny Girl and Secondhand Rose, you know, and she helped me with, I don't know how she had, you know, I, I, you know, she wasn't even very creative, but I used to stay after. And I think that gave me a lot of confidence, you know, in the fact that I had talent and I had something to offer. And she was probably one of my first mentors. I love uh, that though. What, you know, the yeah. impact that that ha had and how yeah, it I remember sort of broke her. you free. Miss Kashignano. That was her name. Miss Kashignano. Oh my God. It just came That's to me. <laughs> I love that you remember that. It's always great to give them, you know, a sh props, shout out. Yeah. It's hard. You know, school's hard for young kids. You know, we think it's easy and we should slot in, but it's not such an easy thing. And when one teacher shows an interest in your talent, it makes such a difference. I completely agree. We, we, we need great teachers, especially here in this country. Um, one life to live. What, what do you remember about the audition or screen test for that, for that role of Melinda? You know, I had just graduated. I had never, and because I was a theater major, I didn't really work that much in front of a camera. So it was terrifying, terrifying. And I think the character of Belinda Kramer was like a schizophrenic and she was in and out of mental institutions. So I was probably perfect for the role because I was so terrified and didn't probably need to act at all. I don't remember much about you know, the screen test. But I remember when I got the job, it was my first big job. I was 22. And I remember wow. Judith Light was on the show. Judith Light, who's, you know, yeah. amazing. And she had this presence about her that just somehow the whole set, you know, she was the one that we all kind of were in awe of because she could cry like, you know, if, you know, like that, like just yeah. cry, and cry and the tears would drip and drip and drip. And that was her thing, you know what I mean? So I just remember being so in awe of her and just really kind of overwhelmed with my first job. It was overwhelming and I was nervous and scared and uh, yeah. And a lot of lines to learn. A lot of lines. Thank God the first day I only had three lines and I remember going back and forth backstage behind the scenes and the sets, just going over my three lines all day. <laughs> all day. My three lines. Who, like who did you work with most on the show? I worked mostly with the guy who played my husband, Peter Jansen, mm -hmm. and and my and that my the woman who played my oldest sister, Dorian. Her name was Dorian. I, yeah, I was curious. I don't know. Was Claire. it Robin Strasser at that time or somebody? No, was... Robin Strasser had left, and it was someone named Claire, very pretty, attractive actress, played my oldest sister. And I only remember the guy who played my husband took it very seriously. And before every take, he'd go <laughs> like this and jump Claire, up. Claire Malice or something. Yes. That Claire Malice. Wow. So, yeah, it was like, yeah. It was just, you threat, you're just thrown into these things. That's it. And you just got to swim or sink. That's just the way it is, you know? But you had to have felt proud coming right out of school and landing a job on, on a, you know, popular yeah. show. God, I look back and, you know, I just worked so much when, when I got out of school. I was, you know, like the It commercial girl, you know. I did, I worked with O.J. Simpson on the Avis Carr commercial and Bob Hope. And I did, you know, Playtex Bra. Like I was the It girl for commercials. And I look back now and think, wow, like now I can't, it's so hard for me to get jobs now. I think, wow, you did not appreciate the way you worked, you know. It's incredible. It, it is incredible. And then uh, shortly after One Life, you ended up on The Doctors with Alec Baldwin at the beginning of his career. Oh, my God. He was such a cutie. He was like, <laughs> like a naughty cutie, you know. And um, we played together for about a year. Um, and I was just like desperate. I was had such a crush on him. Um, 
and but our characters hated each other, like hated each other. And so if you look at the old tapes of it, um, you know, it was a very tempestuous relationship. And I remember thinking he had something. He had so much charisma. I'm not surprised he had huge stardom after that. Um, do, did you know um, Nola, who, the woman who played Nola Dancy Aldrich, Kim Zimmer? I don't know if she was on when you were there. No. I don't think so. I think she got left before I came on. Maybe because I worked yeah. with Kim on Guiding Light. Uh, oh, did you? Yeah, because I, I did PR for Guiding Light, and I know oh. that she was on. I know she became good friends with Alex, so I know that at oh. least she and he crossed paths there. So I think he started way way before I came on. So yeah. that might have been yeah. Uh, was one experience better than the other? One Life or the Doctors? I think I was a lot more confident on the doctors. Um, I think I was more of an equal to everyone where I always felt on one life to live. I was kind of the new newy, and I don't know. I felt more in myself doing the doctors and um, a little more kind of, you know, just confident and yeah. So it was probably maybe a better experience in that way. I'm sure I can't even imagine your first coming out of school and oh. the nerves. <laughs> so hard and it takes so long to feel like you're worthy you know you always hear actors say oh you know i feel like i'm an imposter i feel like you know they've hired me but i'm not really you know i really shouldn't have been hired or i'm not and it just takes a long time before you believe in yourself well and you've done you know prime time you know the cult classic v but daytime is one of the hardest things to do <laughs> God, it is the hardest. You have to learn 20 pages a day and it's every night learning lines, learning lines. And then it's quick, 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 quick. There's not, there's not like there's one day, one show, one day. It's just unbelievable. You literally learn those 20 pages and then you have to take that chip out and learn the next. The next night. It's just incredible. I mean, some days it's not 20, but there were days when it was 20. There was days when it's your storyline and you are big in the show and you've just got to go home that night and learn reams of pages. It's not, you don't have weeks, you have days. But amazingly enough, you get very, very good at it. Very good at it. Your memory gets like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, what do you think, I mean, that's got to be one of the things that you took from your time in daytime. I mean, you must have learned an incredible amount on both shows that yes. helped you everywhere, everywhere else throughout your career. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every job has its own, you know, set of obstacles. So mm. even though you, you've had experience in soaps or experience in this, every time you have a new job, it's like you're starting all over again. And you just have to kind of reach into your bag of tricks and your tools and think, well, this will work. Oh, no, this won't work. So it's sort of amazing acting. It's always like you're starting again for me every time I have a new role. Who are some of the actors you admire most? Mm, well, you know, Julianne Moore comes to, to my mind. Um, I always know that when I see her in something, it's going to be, you know, really high quality. I mean, someone like Matthew McConaughey, you know, I've seen him do some extraordinary things. Um, oh, my God, isn't it funny when you ask that? Like, I've got so many actors that I that I kind of appreciate. Now I'm just blank, you know, you can name oh, some. Yeah. Well, those are, two, those are two amazing, you know, but as you were describing, like, each project, you know, uh, it sounded like almost like it's a first day of school every time you you start a new project. You know the yeah. nerves come and I got it on the set. You know, like walking on the set and you know not knowing like are you going to you don't sometimes meet even your leading man until you know the day the first day helping you have chemistry <laughs> helping there. You know you have they, to kiss them on that first day you've never met. <laughs> working, I mean, I remember I did a series like last year, like a not a very good one. It was called Reef Break. And they they cast me like it was really bad. It lasted one season. They shot it here, and I played like a like the head the head cop, like the head of you know the cops. And the first day I arrived, I had a huge monologue, right? And it's not like I work all the time now as an actress. So all I remember is I literally started the month before learning it, and I started training with some guy on Zoom, and he said, "Oh, be a wolf and scream," and because I wanted to find the power of the chief of the police chief. And I mean, God, that first day I had to take a beta blocker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get on the set 
and it's going to be 20 guys and girls like my, under me that are cops and I'm the chief. Okay. <laughs> And I had to go in there and just be like, so strong and powerful. Oh my God. That was so nerve wracking. I, I did it. I managed to get through it. Challenge, big challenge. Yeah, that's what you do. That's crazy. Well, one of your most popular roles is that of the villainous alien Diana in the yeah. NBC sci-fi uh, miniseries V. How did that role come about? Well, I was in, living in I was living in New York, and I was doing the doctors, and I was the arid extra dry girl. And in those days, they used to fly you know they used to fly you out first class for these auditions, which was amazing. So my agent said, "You got another audition. It's for this mini series called V. I think it's a really big deal. Warner Brothers lot, really huge budget." And so I read the script, and I thought, "Okay, it's, not, it's like a really strange role. It was only like five scenes." And I thought, what an you know, it's an unusual role because when you're reading it, you don't really see how amazing that role is. And I get there and uh, have the audition in a hotel. So I walk in, Kenneth Johnson's there with like ten people, and I go in and right off the plane, audition. Said thank you very much. That was it. Went back to my hotel, and then a little note was slipped under my door: "Don't leave town. Don't leave town." What a great three words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great thing. And the next morning I was in prosthetics because they'd already been filming for like a month. So they hadn't cast my character yet. So that was very, very quick. Yep. Well, I mean, you probably didn't even have time to get nervous on that one. I didn't have time to get nervous and he knew exactly what he wanted. I just went in and he directed me. So direct, he directed me, like even the way I turned my head, the way I looked in the camera, he knew exactly what he wanted with Diana. Did you realize that it would become the cult classic it has? No way. I had no, would I ever in my wildest dreams have thought, even to this day, if I post something about Diana, I get like thousands of likes. If I post anything else, I get like a hundred. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like. Yeah, it's, cr it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I had not seen the original, but my husband was beyond excited when it had come back. He he watched you on the original. He is watching you now here. But, um, but I love, you know, the the uh, remake was fun too. I thought that was great. Yeah. It was really, it was so much more, I mean, the special effects were so unbelievable in the remake. And they, the actors were incredible in it. Morena. The, and the time from the original to this one allowed for some pretty amazing special yeah. effects. To be. So, you know, I mean, it was really cool being on that one, but I just felt that they didn't utilize my character at right. all. And I feel like they lost an opportunity to really have a great show. That second season, the only person who could stand up to the Diana character was me. And instead, they kept me locked away. But that was very political because when you enter these shows, there's normally number one, number two, number three on the call list. So it's very hard to take a character, you know, to take an actor and suddenly make their role very large um, mm. when established who the leads are, you know? My husband said the remake was nowhere near as good as the original. Nowhere <laughs> near. Nowhere. Yeah. But it was still fun. Yeah, I, I mean, mean you, it, it's so wild to think, you know, what year did you film the original? Oh, God, 85 or something. And, and, you know, you're talking about posting stuff here in 2023 about Diana and the reaction. That's, I know. It, and that's we, pretty, imp it's, imp yeah, it's crazy. The impact that you just know. don't know when you're, when you're making a show and yeah. you turn around. And, and even now, you are. things pop up on my feed where they showed me with um, Melania Trump, you know, because she was wearing these glasses and this orange kind of suit. And they put me next to her and said, is she copying her? Like that was like in a major thing. And then like some supermodel was wearing something and they put me next to her. Who is it better? And I'm going, whoa, that's like crazy. You know, it's like, it's so funny. So I love it. It's great. Was there a moment when you realized that it had really, you know, hit an audience? Like for you walking yeah. down the street somewhere or something? It's been like quite a few moments. I mean, 
Okay, you have to understand when I was doing that, there was no social media. So it wasn't until years later that I realized the impact on social media. And I was invited to Madrid for the new V. And, um, and I remember going to the opening of like the first night of the opening of the new series. And there were literally thousands of people. I showed up screaming my name, Diana, Diana, because it was so popular in Spain. They only had two stations and I was sobbing. Like I could not believe it. The love that I had in that city so that was kind of one thing. And then I was in Argentina like about six, seven years ago. And I went to some like market and someone recognized me. And suddenly there was a swarm around me of people like swarming me. And I was like, oh, oh my God. That was actually quite scary because I couldn't speak Spanish, do you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. But like things like that, I just go, it had such an impact in countries like Argentina and Spain. They only had two channels at the time. That, that's inc- I love that. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite roles? Well, of course, Diana. And I think Mission Impossible, the series, mm-hmm. absolutely was one I, of my favorite roles because I, I got to play so many different characters. Um, and I had, and I loved the cast and I just, and it brought me to Australia where I ended up meeting my, my husband and falling in love. So did you meet uh, while well, you you that's right you did I yeah. I read that while you were doing Mission Impossible right Yeah uh, for 6 months and I met him the second week at a club and um yeah we're still we're still together 32 years later so obviously it was the right decision do you know Yeah yep. <laughs> right decision to take Mission Impossible <laughs> That was such a great 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 time I just had so much fun doing that role and of course you know I've been very blessed to do other things that are not as high profile here in Australia. I did a fantastic web series. I did a comedy in Spain that was so much fun called Chica on Chica, which I shot. And uh, I just recently worked with William Macy on a big comedy um, uh. called Ricky Stanicky, Um and Zac Efron's in that. And that was just amazing to work with him. Oh, so, I can imagine. He's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, so that was just like, wow. I mean, it wasn't a huge role, but just to work with him was so incredible. And Trim Season, my movie, um, you know, where I play a witch with powers, um, you know, what could be better than that, you know? So I've just and been really- And you produced happy. it. I was one, I, I found the property. I was, I was shown the, the, the film and then it took about four years to get it done, but we did and we shot it in Utah. So that was really fantastic. Did you like the producing aspect? I do. I like it very much. As a matter of fact, in some ways, I like it probably as much as acting because I find it very creative and I've learned so much about filmmaking and what makes a good film. It's not just a fantastic script, but it's everything else, the crew, the director. You know, you realize so many aspects of filmmaking um, that, yeah, that I've learned and it's been fantastic. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to direct? No, I haven't really. I mean, I've started writing. I've been doing a lot of writing lately. I've been writing, um, trying to get a memoir finished, which is not easy. And um, yeah, I think directing, if I did it in a small scale maybe, but it's so much pressure. I think directing is the hardest thing of all. You're basically that chief of police. (laughs) Not only do you have to know every actor's role and everything about the crew and the editing and the music. I mean, oh my God, I just, I just don't know if I want that sort of stress in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, The memoir, uh, I bet, would do quite well. Yeah, I think it would actually, because I feel like I have a different take on things than a lot of people. I see things well, a little bit. you've also had a varied career. Yes, a- I really have. I have had a very big life. And um, and so I feel like, um, you know, I would I would hope, you know, I'm just struggling with it. It's not easy to write a memoir, especially if you're new to writing, you know? How um, did you uh, approach somebody to help, you know, like how did you tackle it? Well, it's been about five years now um, and I started taking writing courses and then I took a novel course and I wrote all through COVID. And then I took some memoir courses in New York 
And oh, wow. one of my memoir teachers was so amazing. And I said, would you help me? And we've been working together for a year now. He's amazing. Wow. Yep. It, and you're still learning, you, you know, learning. taking all these. So, uh, yep. Yeah. I like that's taking. Incredible. Yeah. I like learn. I like learning. I think it's so important, you know, to learn constantly. Helps us Keeps grow. You yep. Talk about totally. your music. My music? Your music. Yeah. You yeah. released well, a number of albums. Yeah. My music is very much a personal journey. I, my very first album, uh, I was approached by a very kind of avant-garde indie band. And it was really a strange collaboration because I was like the movie star with this kind of strange underground band. But we released an album and um, it was called The Devil Is My Double. I had that music, his music, and I had to make it my own. It was very dark and sort of minimal. And then I decided I wanted to write. So I sat down with some songwriters and wrote the second album called Opus. And I was very kind of into like revenge and betrayal and lust. And, you know, these were like things that were kind of mulling over in my mind. And so the whole album is basically about that about love addiction and you know it's quite and I worked with a Grammy Award winning producer in LA um, and I'm really very proud of that album and I did some incredible music videos um, incredible one called Losing You where I worked with an amazing amazing uh, video um, director so that was great and then I moved into my third album uh, which was about a housewife, a very wealthy socialite housewife who uh, on the out on the, you know, her appearance seems to be like so perfect, but underneath she's on Valiums and whiskeys and her, everything's falling apart, her marriage, her. And so it was kind of that journey. And um, yeah. And I had a very well-known kind of jazz producer produce that. So it's kind of jazz fusion. I, I, I love it. Do you, have a preference of acting or singing or? I kind of like everything, you know, I like, I just like being creative and working with creative people. So whether it's producing music videos and working with a director or it's singing or it's acting or it's, you know, just working with like-minded people. Um, you know, I've, I've, I just love that. Yeah. Is your husband in this business? Not at all. He is a businessman. <laughs> God, he's a businessman, so I can afford to do all of my little projects because most of them, don't <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, he's great. He's um, you know, he's 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 taught me a lot about finances and hedge funds and you know the markets and um, I just love learning about that too. So yeah, that's incredible. I love that. Well, yeah. you know. He, he provides you an opportunity to do all your creative stuff. He really does. I feel very, very blessed. I really do. I have a very beautiful life. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I wanted to talk about your son, Harry Haynes, who yeah. passed away in 2020. You, you wrote at the time of his death, he was 27 and had the world at his feet, but sadly he struggled with mental illness and addiction. A brilliant spark shone bright too short a time. What would you say to any parent watching who has a son or daughter struggling with mental health issues today? Look, I don't know, you know, I mean, it probably depends on where you live and what country you're in. I mean, in Australia, oh my God, that's my dog. Hold on, sorry. Go get your door. <laughs> on the door. Can you believe it? She's like, and she's pounding on the door. Oh, that was a dog pounding on the door? That was my dog pounding on the door. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I have to say that, you know, I feel like there needs to be so much more education in the school system. It has to start in the school system around kids that are different. Because often kids that do struggle a bit have a unique way of looking at the world. And you're thrown into school systems where they want everyone to be homogenized so that it's not more work on the teachers. And 
it's really tough. I, I feel like if at a very young age, these kids are understood more or giving more opportunities or shown how beautiful their uniqueness is, maybe that would make life a little easier for them. And I just know that Harry didn't get that, you know, which makes me so sad that, you know, that we were let down by the school system. Um, because, you know, he was non-binary and he was that at a time when that was not talked about. I mean, now it's like, you know, they're men are dressing like women. Blah. But when he was a kid, he was very unique in, in a private school where sport is king. You know, he people didn't know what to do with him. And um, and that's kind of makes me really sad. I think it's changing, but not enough. You know, not, not enough. enough. Not enough. Yeah. I mean, not like I said, I, you know, I'm 57 and, you know, people didn't say the word gay. You know, they 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 called me faggot, but they didn't. You know, there was no understanding of what this meant in, in our world. Um, yeah. yeah. And, I think, and I do feel like parents should look at their uniqueness of their children and celebrate that. Celebrate that instead of trying to change them or. But even having said that. You know, mental health, um, it's just, it's difficult. It's very difficult. And addiction. Once they go down that that path of addiction, once they start on those very heavy drugs, it's very, it becomes a whole other thing. So what you want to do is prevent that. You want to prevent them from ever, ever picking it up, ever picking up those drugs. Um, because once they're addicted, it's just a whole other journey. Addi right. I mean, right. You're... You talking about two yeah. things crashing into each other almost, you know, and it's a, it's a hard, hard road. What has helped you the most during the last three years? I think trying to not push away the grief, knowing that it's not going to kill me. I'm not going to die. That it's, you know, that, and it makes me sad to think about it, but grief is just your love. It's your love. Oh, and I, I just beautiful. loved him. So, you know, I loved him so much. And I know that he's doing okay. But I think the thing that helps me is knowing that I can live with grief and also find beauty every day. I can find beauty. More beauty, I think, than I've ever found. His life is so poignant, you know? Mm. And well, and he followed in mom's footsteps. He did. He followed in, he was my mini me. <laughs> I mean, except more, much more fearless. And his fearlessness was not good because <laughs> he was not afraid of anything. And that, that's not a good thing, you know? What was it like to watch him on television? You know, that first, what was the first thing he did that was on TV? Well, I just thought when I saw him in American Horror Story, you know, he played, it wasn't a big role, but he was so beautiful. Oh my God, my son was magnificent looking. And just seeing him, and he was young then, and he was not, you know, addled by drugs then. And I thought, oh, he's going to have this huge career, and I'm so proud of him, and he's so unique. And it was just wonderful. I was very proud of him, you know, proud of how hard he tried. And it's, I mean, you know, you went through all of that. You know how hard it is. And oh, he yeah. I know. I know. I think that was the thing that you... You're very naive when you, I mean, I was very naive when I started the addiction journey with my son. And I think that you don't realize really that, that it is very difficult to overcome addiction. Oh. And, and, and if a child was sick with cancer, you could give and give and give and I love you and I'm here and I'm, but you're told when your child has addiction, hard love, hard, you know, don't give in, don't, you know, and so you're caught between the natural instinct of a parent, which is to love, and I'm here for you, and sort of trying to kind of be tough. It's very difficult. I mean, it, addiction is the worst. It, the worst. It's the worst. And you're right, because you're told to let, you know, somebody has to hit their own rock bottom or, yeah. you know, to pick themselves. They, they want to you know, have to want to get up and, and live. And, and that's really tough. That's really tough. Your other son, Sam, did he follow in mom's footsteps? You know, he's amazing. My son, Sam, I'm so proud of him. He lives in New York. Oh, wow. Okay. 
And he is an extraordinary artist. He's also incredibly, he, he took coding courses, so he understands the tech part of computers. But he has released an amazing body of work. They're, you know, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Digital artworks. And he's just now about to release his second body of work. And he's, you know, people, he's just got something. He does projection. He's got, He does projection for theater, big projections. And he also trades equity. So he's he's got both sides. Um, he's, he's married. I was he's just going to say, he's got dad's side, the business side there, right? And the side and my side. And he's probably more like his dad than me. He's not like, Harry was very effusive and dramatic like me, you know, and yeah. Sam's more kind of holds things in more, do you know? But He's got a beautiful wife. She's a writer. She writes a lot for publications. And they're just, yeah, they're great. They're really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're yes, great. absolutely. And New York is a great place. Jane, such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for joining. You're amazing. You're an amazing interviewer. I oh, mean thank that. You. Thank I, you. I appreciate that. It means a lot because you've 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 had a career where you've been interviewed maybe once or twice. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thanks. I really do appreciate that. And good luck at the premiere tonight. Have a Thank great time. So All right. So okay. Bye. Bye, Jane. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. Uh, don't forget the Tears of Faith and the remixes are now available on Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, and all digital platforms. To learn more about Parallax, visit Parallax, P A R R A L O X.com. It's down here on YouTube right below. Click the link. Join me next Wednesday, October 25th, when Tom LaSanti, Eileen Kirsten, and Christopher Durham join me live to talk about the new Ryan's Hope book that is out next week. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. I hope you all have a great weekend. And please, everybody, please stay safe.